Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. And this time we're going to uh, do a bit of playing with digital circuits, but it's uh, digital circuits with a bit of a difference. Uh, you may recall, um, if you watch the channel regularly, about five or six weeks ago I reviewed this, which is the Zoe um, dual channel uh, handheld scope and multimeter. And uh, when I did that, I actually titled, entitled the video uh, Electronics Lab in a Box, um, and I, which I think is um, a, a fair comment, to be honest. But, but is it really? Can you use it for things? So I thought, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself a little challenge. And that little challenge is to see if I can play with digital electronics uh, using the scope uh, with its built-in signal generator and it came up against a bit of a problem so this video is about what i did to play with it and how i solved that problem and hopefully uh, it'll um, encourage you if you're thinking of getting something like this something straightforward you don't need lots of really expensive gear to be able to start teaching yourself about electronics so let's um start with um the circuit theory and then uh, we're going to have a look at how we got on with the scope itself so for no other reason than I can do, I'm going to play with a, a CMOS quad and AND gate, in this case the, the 4093, and chip looks a bit like that. So there's four NAND gates, and you might notice that it's also got the Schmidt trigger symbol on those NAND gates. Now I've talked about the what Schmidt triggers do in the past, so I don't propose to rework that again. Uh, they still work as NAND gates in the way you would expect them to. They just happen to be a Schmidt trigger version. So I'm going to be a very good boy and I'm just going to use the first of those gates, the bottom left, and the inputs, the unused inputs to the other gates, I'm going to tie to ground because that's uh, good practice, keeps the noise down. Um, so we've got a Schmidt trigger NAND gate and if we connect the inputs together uh, what we end up with is a NOT gate, which no, more normally would have the symbol like that. And I could have used uh, an inverter chip if I'd wanted, but I happened to pick up the 4093 first, so there's no logic to it. So a NOT gate, um, or an inverter, has a truth table, which looks something like that. So if the input's low, the output will be high, output's high, input will be low. And, uh, Tying the two inputs of a NAND gate together gives you uh, the same effect. So that's the circuit I'm going to uh, uh, try and uh, use with the Zoe oscilloscope and signal generator. Um, but we've got a slight problem, and that problem is that the maximum voltage that the Zoe uh, signal generator will produce is about two and a half volts. Now, um, purists are going to tell me that should work, and when I actually checked this gate I got about I think it was about 2.36 volts or something it would start to trigger so theoretically it's possible but in, in reality when I tried it it just didn't work so um, we haven't got enough um, uh, pulse uh, height or, or, or voltage if you like to be able to reliably uh, vary the input of the NAND gate using the signal generator on the scope so um, for the purposes of this exercise I want to assume that I don't have anything else except the scope, a breadboard and a few components so what can I do? Well um, I could make some kind of driver so I'm going to do a very quick and dirty version of that so I'm also going to do a little MOSFET driver so it's very simple it's a 2N7000 I'm going to feed the signal in to the gate and I'm going to take the signal from below the 1k resistor there. The 1k resistor simply limits the current through the MOSFET. Uh, a 1k resistor with 5 volts is going to give you about 5 milliamps of current. That doesn't really matter, it's the, um, it's the voltage I'm interested in. So as well as looking at the action of the gate, we'll also check that the action of our little um, uh, MOSFET driver, if you like, also works. So those are the two circuits we're going to use. So having talked about the theory, let's um, let's get on with it and let's go and look at that on the bench. Here we are then uh, with a setup. I'll just talk you quickly through what's going on. So I've got the Zoe setup here with uh, 
uh, 500 hertz uh, square wave output and I've got uh, the yellow trace channel 1 attached to the the um, signal generator output if you like that's the input to the FET this is the FET here or MOSFET um, and I've got both uh, channel 1 and channel 2 with the blue trace set to uh, 2 volts per division so let's just this is the jumper I intend to use to connect the MOSFET to the uh, to the gate eventually so let's just check what what's going on with the output from that MOSFET see if it really is driving it a little bit harder and uh, hopefully you can see there that we have um, roughly two and a half volts there on the yellow trace but on the blue trace we've clearly got pretty much double that so we've got a virtually five volt swing enough enough to drive the chip fine so it's doing the job now um, you may have spotted we've got inversion going on here yes um, indeed we have so that doesn't matter because we just simply want a, a square wave input but just be aware of that uh, we've got when the uh, signal generator sends a high pulse um, the MOSFET will be low and it'll be high when it when it's the way around it's inversion you know what I mean so um, let's now uh, just quickly take a picture of that so we can refer to it later if we need to it's very easy to just just do a two second press on the hold save button to do that so next thing I want to do is I want to just check that the um, logic circuit is doing what we said so here I've got um, the 4093 I've got one two three gates not in use uh, all tied low uh, and the gate that I am using I've got the output going to an LED here through a current limited resistor from from pin 3 there and I've got the two inputs on pins 1 and 2 tied together to this uh, this red jumper so currently I've got it uh, pulled down through a, a 10k resistor there uh, and the input's low so you'd expect the output to be high you may recall from the truth table just now it's effectively set up as a not gate so if I take um, the input high the output should go low and as you can see if I pop that jumper onto there if I've taken the input high output's gone low take it off pull down resistor takes it low again and there we have uh, our not gate working correctly so the two bits of the circuit work correctly so now what I'm going to do is we'll take away the um, checking the output of the MOSFET and we will uh, start uh, we'll move the um, oscilloscope yellow trace so this is the output of the signal generator effectively after it comes through the MOSFET so we've got our nice uh, punchy um, 5 volt signal and this jumper here allows me to connect um, that input to the to the gate so I'm going to do that so I've connected that to the gate um, you can see the LED dim slightly that's because it's actually um, switching on and off 500 times a second you just can't see it so let's now connect the blue trace to the output of the gate and see if we really have got inversion going on um, and yes we have um, as you can see output of the gate there remember the LED will be dragging that down slightly in fact if I take the LED out of circuit that should rise that back up again just can't do that let's just disconnect the current limiting resistor there you go so the output of the gate is uh, the opposite of the input so we've got not going on um, what was the point of that well the point of that was just to show you that you can use something like this as a lab if you've just got a few components a breadboard and this obviously there's a 5 volt power supply involved here as well um, but that's um, not hard to you know you could use batteries if you wanted to but it is possible to use the signal generator to get past the um, obvious limitation and to be able to actually uh, record uh, what you've done um, and I've, I've saved all those so later I can get them off via USB should I want to but I've been able to demonstrate the operation of um, a logic gate there and if you wanted to do something more complicated wanted to do some frequency division or something yes you could do it so um, I'm going to stick by what I said uh, yeah you can use this as a lab in the box there's a few little hiccups to get past but if you know if that's all you've got um, yeah you can 
do some experiments, you can learn a bit about electronics and hopefully uh, have some fun as you, as you go along doing that. So there you go, that's uh, a little bit of digital electronics for you. OK, well there you have it, uh, a simple dem demonstration of using um, that, that oscilloscope and its signal generator with uh, some logic chips. Uh, had to use an inexpensive FET to produce um, a suitable signal, but uh, we did it and it um, wasn't too difficult to do. And it's definitely um, learning electronics that you could do on the kitchen table. So, um, you know, you don't need fancy kit. Uh, something as simple as this and there are other scopes as well hopefully I'm going to uh, do a similar video using another scope so we can um, see that that kind of thing going on uh, but yeah um, you'd be amazed what you can do with minimum kit so I hope you've enjoyed that um, thanks very much for watching um, please click like and subscribe that really helps and hopefully look forward to seeing you on the next video